nice to buy her a jar of jam a week and some bread because what I got there is hog food. <laughs> She's from uh, West End, Grand Bahama. So all they fed you was grits and rice? Yeah, grits and rice, that's all. No other meat, no other meat. If you don't like it, you don't eat it, it don't work down because I ain't eating it, you see? Hey, China's got the rice for you. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and I heard, got what got me, I heard the woman say, says, don't worry, says tomorrow, says he's going to be shut up in the room all day. That was me she was talking about, you see, and she yeah. didn't know I heard her. Yeah, says, you ain't got to worry about him tomorrow, says he's going to be shut off all day. So it happened that I had already sent Robert a message to come there to pick me up. And uh, they um, carried me up there, and the woman, one of the girls in the room, they had four girls in one room. And she said, what's happening, Mr. Sands? You won't run out this morning. I said, yeah, I asked them to let me get out, and they wouldn't. They said, you can't get out today because they, it's too early. It's never too early to walk. So I got out and went to the next neighbor down there. He sold uh, a coffee and some donuts. So he said, you got out what I'm I told him what I was named. He said, Mr. Sands, that ain't no worry. He says, I'll give you a donut and give you a, a, a cup of tea. So that's what he did. Before I got through with him, the maid, what was living up there, where I was, she come down and said, no, he's, he's got to go back to the place. I said, yeah, that's all right. I knew Robert was coming then, you see. Yeah. I told her, I said, that's all right. So the two policemen come. And one of them I met to the, to the gate, and I shook his hand. I said, hello, I'm Mr. Santon, such a thing. I was living in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice knowing you. She thought they were going to make, she called him and made a big to-do out of it. He's here and he got out. He don't know what he's going to run away or what he's going to do. All of this she put on, you know. I said, that's no good bitch. Anyhow, when Robert come, I was out in the yard and she didn't, she didn't pass the box, the two suitcases I had. She threw them out as she could throw them, about four of them into that tree. But they didn't break on. We had, we had new stuff that Stephanie gave me and Robert gave me and all that. When I went up there, well, I didn't use it because you can't, there you can wear clothes, you know. Yeah. And uh, the same black maid, they had big ass thing. She took every scrap of clothes, what was there, what was new, and uh, put a whole uh, uh, coat, what Steve had, not Steve, uh, my uh, brother in law, what he had, what he used in the rain cone. She put that on top and closed it up like everything was all right. Stole I had three, and I had four or five t shirts and, and other shirts, what they had there, car keys and all that. She stole every freaking thing out of it. Well, I said I was going to report them, but you know, but you can't win. No, no you can't. Are you going to win and they got a dozen women in there? Right? I said to myself, I have to report them and they're letting them. Robert said he wrote the comfort with the people. What works for government out to the, uh, what did you name? Social, Social service? Yeah, yeah. Out there, he wrote them, wrote them a long ladder and told them what this woman was doing. So, all of the stuff would come here, they'd bring it and put it in a big thing like that, full full of sandwiches and stuff. Next day it'd be full of ham and turkey and stuff like that. Oh. Yeah, nobody got on with this maid. <laughs> I say, you all feeding the maid. And she took everything and put it on a car and carried it home that night. Next morning she brought a container back and, and put it there to put the stuff in while I come in that day. You, know, I, I, you could stomach that. <laughs>